We are six startups down. We have seven startups to go. Some very interesting ideas in the mix. But before I introduce our next round, I want to introduce a guy who also had a pretty interesting idea the street scooter, a 100% electrical vehicle that's used to deliver packages all over Germany via Deutsche Post. Let me introduce you to the inventor. He is Christopher Deutzkens. Welcome to the innovation stage. I know you're getting tired of clapping, but do it anyway. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, it's a great pleasure to be here today. Uh, taking part at this uh, great conference, and I'm um, very excited that I have the uh, opportunity to at least give you a short insight uh, on what we're actually doing at uh, Street Scooter. Um, okay, <laughs> here we go. Um, well, uh, uh, that should also be the objective of the presentation right now, that uh, I give you a little insight on what we're doing at Street Scooter and also uh, talk to you a little bit about how we developed the company to the point uh, where we are uh, today. And um, you might have seen from my speaker's background that I'm actually not working directly for Street Scooter. I'm working for uh, Aachen University, but uh, uh, Street Scooter is a spin-off from Aachen University. Uh, I was actually part of the first team of the first engineers that started with the project uh, some years ago, and um, I'll tell you a little bit uh, about it where we are today. Um, first of all, I'd like to start uh, with what we're actually doing. Uh, so we're developing and producing electric vehicles in Aachen, uh, mainly for fleet customers. Uh, we're focusing especially of Deutsch, on Deutsche Post, DHL, uh, as it has just been mentioned. And um, we, so it's, a, it's a, a B2B business that we're working on. And you can see the basic product range uh, that we're offering on, on this slide. Yeah? You see the vehicles, but beside the vehicles, there are many technologies uh, also uh, available that we develop for the fleet customers, like, uh, uh, for example, uh, uh, some kind of fleet management solutions uh, for predictive maintenance, a charging infrastructure, a software to level the charging process, and so on. So around the vehicles, we have a couple of technologies uh, specifically for uh, fleet customers. Yeah? We're focusing on a very low TCO. Uh, our cars uh, are every time in competition to cars with a combustion engine, and uh, we need to be able for our customers to show that we're actually cheaper than a conventional cars with a, a, a combustion engine. Um, yeah, that's the product range. We are currently 150 employees uh, in Aachen for the engineering development and another around 100 employees for the production. Uh, we're producing in Aachen. Um, we're um, um, situated in a former factory of Bombardier. They used to produce trains in Aachen, but they shut down the factory a couple of years ago, and we moved into these facilities, and we are now producing our cars there. Uh, this year, we're going to produce 2,500 cars in Aachen, and next year, we're going to ramp up to 10,000 cars uh, in 2017. A um, little bit about the product range. You see that we're actually starting um, uh, with, with pedelecs. Yeah? We also have the pedelecs, which are used by Deutsche Post DHL to deliver the uh, uh, posts and packages. Uh, we have a small one, two-wheeler, uh, that can carry 60 kilograms. We have a trike. Um, that can carry 90 kilograms. This one is already in series production, and this is going to ramp up uh, actually uh, in October this year. Um, on the other side of the, of the product range, we have these uh, uh, logistic carriers. Um, we mainly produce this one currently, and you can also see it on this fair if you go out of this room to the right side. Uh, you won't miss it, it's very yellow. Uh, so uh, this is the car that we currently produce uh, uh, in Aachen. And um, there is another version which we're going to ramp up this year. Uh, it's pretty similar to the one that we produce right now. It's a little bit larger. So this one has four cubic meters. The next one will have eight cubic meters. And currently, we're in the development of another one right here, uh, which is going to be up to 3.5, five tons, this, this uh, sprinter uh, uh, range. Uh, Street Scooter today is 100% part of uh, Deutsche Post DHL. We had two more derivatives developed by Street Scooter, but uh, when we sold Street Scooter to Deutsche Post DHL, we kept the uh, rights on especially this vehicle, and with this small two-seater, we founded the company called Ego Mobile, and with this company, we're going to 
uh, uh, bring this car into serious production again. Uh, we're going to produce 100 of this two-seater with Ego next year, and we're going to ramp up in 2018 um, um, then for the production. So that's what we're going to do. A little bit about the development of Street Scooter. You can see the, the timeline here. Uh, it all started at uh, Aachen University, as I already mentioned. Uh, it was a, a project where we uh, started with the idea we need to develop an affordable electric vehicle. Yeah? Because right from the start, it was obvious that e-mobility uh, has the challenge to uh, cover the cost to be competitive to cars with combustion engines. So we started with this idea, uh, with a research project, and then in 2010, we founded this street scooter company. We had a couple of uh, automotive suppliers on board that invested in this company, also leasing bank, uh, energy supplier. And with these investments, we financed the first development uh, of the first car, which we did very quickly, actually, in only a year. Um, we showed our first running prototype on the IAA. Um, and at that time, we received the um, development contract by Deutsche Post DHL, uh, who asked us to develop actually a, a post vehicle for them. Yeah? And um, that started in the same year, and also only a year later, we showed a first prototype on the AAA um, in Hanover. And then we proceeded bringing this car into a pre series. We had a lot of testing in the fleet of, of DHL. And now, last year, we started the series production of the vehicles. Um, at the end of 2014, the company has been sold to uh, Deutsche Post DHL. It's now 100% part of it. And uh, together with DHL, we also um, created a so-called innovation park uh, in Aachen last year. It's a, a 20,000 square meters facility, uh, which is actually more or less like a small city. You can see we have roundabout junctions, small houses, of course, with, uh, with a yellow post box in front. And uh, we're developing autonomous driving, connectivity solutions, uh, up to fully automated uh, parcel delivery, which is, of course, a little bit into the future. But uh, it's a nice test track that we can use. And, and we're going to see first applications, simple follow me functions, for example, uh, that can already be uh, implemented in the near future. Yeah, that's the story of Street Scooter. And when we talk about what is actually uh, interesting uh, about Street Scooter, the, the key innovation can actually be seen on this slide. Because the key innovation of Street Scooter is how we manage to bring a car into serious production with such a small effort. We had a very small team. We started with five person. Then we were around 20, 30 at this time. Uh, we grew to 100, 150 later on. But it's, it's, it was a very small team, and we did it actually in a very short time. When you compare it to an OEM, it usually takes around five to seven years and roughly one billion euro to develop a completely new car. Yeah, so, and, and that is the, I think, most interesting thing when you talk about street scooter. Yeah, we don't have the lightest car, we don't have the fastest car, but the way we brought it from an idea to serious production, I think, is the interesting part about it. And that's not only interesting for street scooter, I believe. Uh, it's, it's interesting for, a lot, for most of the startups, actually, that we saw today. Um, uh, most of them uh, face the same challenge. It's, it's quite easy to get a good idea, to have a first prototype, but bringing this into a product you can sell to the customer is still a, a very big challenge. Yeah? But not only for startups, also for large companies, uh, I think it's, it's a great challenge. And many ideas are killed because it seems that it's too expensive, takes too much time until this idea can be a product I can sell to the customer. Yeah? And especially in large companies, uh, uh, people don't want to risk, don't want at the, at the end, don't want to be the one that was responsible for a wrong investment uh, uh, and an innovation that actually failed. Yeah? So the challenge of how to reduce the effort bringing an idea into serious production, I think, is a key challenge for many, many companies. Uh, or, Let's put it the other way around. Yeah? At the moment, you're, um, um, you're able to uh, be very efficient in bringing an idea into serious production. It's, it's a great competitive advantage, yeah? not only in terms of saving money in that process, not only um, in terms of having the chance to be more innovative. Um, I think especially in terms of that this competitive advantage is a long-term competitive advantage. Yeah? Because the faster you are in the market, the higher the ma your market shares are. There are many studies that can prove that. Uh, and also, 
um, um, I think having this ability to be very efficient in that way is something you cannot easily copy. Yeah? I mean, a technology that your competitor can easily copy, but an internal process being very efficient in this, in this way, I think, is, is a very good long-term competitive advantage. We're talking about return on engineering when we're talking about this industrialization process, and we kind of for us, develop the vision that we actually need to be able to do that in half of the time in a tenth of the investment. Now, of course, this formula mathematically is not very correct, yeah? and I'm also I cannot on a penny tell you how we achieved that with Street Scooter, but I think this, this basic vision that was very important for us and this return on engineering is, I think, the, the key innovation we achieved with Street Scooter. Now, how did we do that? Um, if you would have asked me before we started, actually, uh, uh, to be honest, I couldn't have told you. So many of these ideas and methods we developed along the way. Yeah? But now we ask ourselves, looking backwards, uh, how could we achieve that? Uh, we put three principles together that, at least for us, for our case, were very crucial. Yeah? I mean, behind these principles, there are many methods, technologies, and so on we developed for ourselves, but at the end, we, we recognized that these three ideas, at least for us, were very, very important along the way. The first one, uh, we, we call it the innovation system, so meaning working in parallel innovation and learning. Yeah? Traditionally, you coming from the idea, developing, engineering, building prototypes, bring, going into pre-series, series production, and along the way, the further you go, the more you learn about your product, the more you learn about your customer. And, I believe it's, it's very important that you really do that in parallel and go as quickly as possible into hardware, as quickly as possible go into the market, learn with your customer, deal with your customer. Uh, uh, and uh, for us, uh, you could see that only in a year we did the first prototype. And later on, if you look at the series product, it looks completely different. But it was very important for us that very quickly we build up very simple, very cheap first prototypes. Yeah? And I mean, this idea is not very new, I mean, you, you, you know that probably from agile uh, management, but um, it's still a challenge when we're talking about vehicles, uh, building early prototypes, as you still need manufacturing drawings, these prototypes are still very expensive, it's just something different than creating an early prototype of a software. Yeah? So uh, that, at least for us, was one of the key factors uh, that was important. A second uh, factor pr or principle that we believe was very important, uh, we call it customer engineering. And that actually has two perspectives. One perspective we also heard in the presentation before, you can also call it like value engineering, is ask yourself what is actually important for your customer and concentrate on these aspects. And what is not important, do it easy, do it simple, and reduce your uh, solution. And especially the second part is the challenge, uh, especially for us as German engineers, I believe. Uh, so really reducing and really keeping things simple that don't create value for the customers uh, is the interesting part. But the other perspective on that is also to get into the market as quickly as possible. Yeah? Uh, also that for us was very important that uh, we could uh, use our products at a very early stage in the fleet of DHL. And it's always uh, quite a challenge to decide when it's the right point. If you're too early, your product's not ready. If you're too late, you're missing all of the learning and, and the customer experience. Yeah? So it's, it's quite a challenge to find the right moment. But um, 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 for us, that was a very important aspect. And with DHL, of course, we had an, uh, a customer. We had one cust large customer we could work with, which is the advantage. On the other side, the disadvantage it's a quite challenging customer. Yeah? The, 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 the guys that drive the cars, they're really pros. They use it eight hours a day. So they do things with the cars you cannot imagine as an engineer. Yeah? So you really need to get this experience. And the last part, uh, we call it disruptive network approach. Instead of centrally designing the overall system, then putting down all of the components and specifications down to almost the last screw of the car, um, we sort of um, um, uh, ask our suppliers, now what is the solution you have ready? What can we integrate? And we rather uh, adapted our overall system to use off-the-shelf solutions, to use solutions of the suppliers uh, we, could, we could actually uh, uh, get. And also we um, worked rather in an equal partnership because we said to the suppliers, well, you're the, the expert that actually does this part since many, many years. So tell us, how you want to do, how, 
how we have to adapt the system so you can make this part as cheap as possible, and we adapt our system so we can integrate it. Yeah? So that's kind of another way of thinking at that point, and, and that was also at the beginning very interesting to start the discussions with the suppliers, because they were like, well, yeah, we can design this part, but give us your specifications. And we said, we don't want to specify, because then it's too late. Tell us how you want to do it, how it's the cheapest way, and we're going to adapt the overall system so we can integrate it. Yeah? So these are the three key ideas or principles that were important for us, and I'll try to give you a little bit more insight how we actually do it. Uh, it's just very limited time, but I'll try to give you some examples from our development, how we actually realize these, these ideas. The first example, I'd skip this one on the left side. Uh, as we're on an innovation uh, um, conference, I think most of you probably already know the Marshmallow Challenge. Yeah? So if you don't know, have a look at it. It's a very nice story and example, but uh, I'd skip that uh, by limited time and just go to this uh, uh, um, example here. So the idea of the first principle is to um, learn at a very, very early stage, go into hardware, uh, make your... Uh, a product that you can touch it, feel it, drive it, whatever. Yeah? And um, an example here is that we were working together with Trumpf, and they told us they have a technology where we can actually build our body without any kind of fixtures. Yeah? The idea is that you, instead of bend your sheets and do spot welding of the parts, you laser cut them and then sort of stick them together so that you don't need any kind of fixture. You just click them together, and you can laser weld them. And we, thought, we thought, well, it's a great idea. It's exactly what we need. Low investments, uh, easy to ramp up, uh, exactly this kind of technology we're interested in. And the first thing we did, instead of analyzing what kind of material we can use or what kind of strengths we have at the, at the uh, joints, we, in the first step, built a whole body with this technology. Uh, and it was quite interesting uh, along the way because we thought at the beginning the main challenge will be the tolerances. Yeah? Uh, with laser welding you always have the challenge that you need uh, a good uh, uh, welding joint, you need low tolerances, and we thought that will be the, the key challenge. Also we have uh, tolerance chains here in these, in these components, uh, but when we started building the body we found out that actually this helps us to uh, um, to manage the tolerances, uh, it, it actually some of the uh, uh, worst tolerances you have in the single parts you can manage in the overall system. So actually that was no problem at all. It was even better than before. But uh, what we found very challenging was the assembly of these parts. Yeah? It's very hard to at least partly find an automated solution or you still need some kind of fixtures to easily uh, assemble it. Uh, so that was the key challenge that we found out. And we put a lot of effort uh, to um, develop or to, to further uh, uh, bring this technology in this term. And today you saw that uh, um, we're going to uh, ramp up a next derivative next year. And in this one, we will have the, at least the floor structure uh, built in this technology here. So that's just uh, uh, one of the examples. Uh, I'll skip this one a little bit. Maybe this one is also uh, 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 interesting. Um, that's how we deal actually with the suppliers. As I said, our approach was also always rather uh, taking a, an existing solution that is probably not the, the best or most optimal solution for the overall system, but taking rather solutions that are ready where the, where the suppliers say this is the cheapest and easiest way to do it and adapting our overall system to integrate these components. So, of course, if you, when you top down specify your system and specify all of your components, it's the optimal solution in every part, in every module. But if you rather go bottom up, yeah, you have a lot less effort in the industrialization and that saves us you a lot of costs, uh, time, and so on. And uh, just an example of that, what we're working on there is uh, a modular uh, camera system for the wiring harness system, as currently we still have the situation that you always have a one-to-one one -one, uh, connection between the sensors and the control units, and we're working on the camera system so that we can easily integrate sensors, uh, more functionality uh, into the car. Now this is a uh, 
a, a short outlook on what we're doing with Street Scooter in the future. You see here, these are currently our two uh, models. This one is ramping up uh, in November. We're going to produce 200 of this one in, in this year and then ramping up next year. Uh, we're actually developing uh, another 3.5 to 5 tons car uh, as a new derivative. And there are a couple of functional derivatives. Um, so from the beginning of next year, we will sell the product not only to Deutsche Post DHL, we will also go uh, into other markets and uh, sell the uh, car also to other fleet customers. At the end, let me finish uh, uh, with the last word also about Aachen University, because I believe that we, in, in the last years, built up quite an interest, quite interesting infrastructure for technology startups in, in Aachen. Uh, Aachen is one of the largest technical universities in Germany, has many, many engineers, many good ideas for new startups, but so far the challenge was also to bring these ideas into a product you can sell. And with the new technology campus in Aachen, uh, it's a large technology campus that is built right now, it's a 2 billion in euro investment ongoing in Aachen. We also build up quite a good infrastructure, for example, eLab ramp-up factory. It's a very flexible infrastructure that can be rented by company, kind of like a large tech shop uh, uh, where you can also produce pre-series of products. So we support this company with a very good infrastructure. And besides Street Scooter, we now have a couple of startups already in the field of e-mobility. Uh, and, well, if you're interested, we would like... Uh, um, by PEM, we support these startups, we support them in the ramp up of the product. If you're interested to join us on, the, on this journey, uh, you're more than welcome to contact me and uh, I'll be happy uh, we have the potential to realize some more ideas uh, that we have there. Thank you very much.